Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. A great holiday special, just a lot of fun, it's beautiful and sweet, so let's just break it down. Um, I do love the general premise behind this, obviously being like, yeah, let's like lift up... Uh, Peter's spirits, especially considering, like, well, you know, Christmas is always a rough time because Cracklin tells a story of, like, uh, when uh, they were first introduced to Christmas through Peter, that Yondu just kind of smashed it up because it's like, yeah, as a Ravenger, we, we basically own, like, sentimentality isn't needed. We, we kind of go about things like we, we take what you, you only get what you take, basically, type of situation. So he wasn't in the holiday spirit. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just kind of a rough time of year and it got Cracklin thinking. And I love that it's like, you know, uh, Nebula drops like, I mean, this special in general did some interesting, like, just background lore building about stuff because she's like, yeah, we don't really have time for that ever since, um, the, we bought the, uh, I don't think she said, I mean, maybe she said, she didn't say we specifically, but ever since, um, Nowhere got bought from the collector, we got a lot. I was like, wait, what? I was like, you just casually dropped that like it was nothing. Because I'm like, I want to say the last time we saw Nowhere continuity-wise was Infinity War when he came here to get, when Thanos came here to get the Reality Stone. We never saw the outside of like the, what the head, the damage looked like on the outside from the head perspective. I think from what we saw in the special, it looked like it was about the same. But like, yeah, the only little bit we got was when he used the Reality Stone to make it seem like everything was okay when in actuality, it's like, no, like the place was a uh, heaping fire pit because Thanos like wrecked shop there so much. I think that's the last time canonically speaking. I mean, I know it's in the past, but I don't know if Captain Marvel, I don't think she, cause she would have been the only other character would have had a or movie opportunity to go to nowhere. I don't think she ever went to nowhere. So I think in continuity wise and just any, you know, any movie at all, I think that's the last time we went nowhere. Cause I, for, for my recollection, they didn't go there and, Guardians of the Galaxy, maybe they probably would have. If the, I, mean, I mean, I said Guardians of the Galaxy. I meant Thor, uh, Love and Thunder. You know, if that... I don't, I don't know. But I, I I just thought that was such an interesting thing. And it's like, right, we gotta, like, get this place and buy it back. And I was like, did also... I didn't know that... Maybe they dropped that in the first movie, and I just don't remember. I was like, the Collector owns Nowhere? I didn't know that. Like, I mean, he's a big shot there, but I guess I didn't remember that detail that he owned Nowhere. Or was that something he did after the fact. No, it sounds like he probably already did and maybe he was ready to get it off his hands. I guess that's also why they have Cosmo because, um, well, because I know he's there in the animated series in the collector's collection, but I don't know if, I mean, well, I don't know what, what Cosmo, I don't know if Cosmo is supposed to be a boy or girl. It doesn't really matter. Um, but, um, Cosmo is there during the animated series. I don't remember if Cosmo's there in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 or not. It's been a, while since I rewatched it, so, uh, but like I said, I just thought that was such an interesting little, uh, lore thing, I also love that, that song that was performed about Christmas and everything, and Peter was like, no, that's not right, Santa doesn't have, a uh, flamethrower, also referencing, uh, Mrs. Claus being a stripper, because talking about the pole and everything, I was like, wow, and I love that when he does the spinning art theme, and, uh, Star Lord's like, Peter's like, oh, that's actually pretty neat, I had never heard of the old um, old 97s before this, but uh, that was a uh, pretty catchy tune. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a song that's going to end up on Spotify and probably do some decent numbers. Because, I mean, that's a really catchy tune. I really I really like that. I really like that a lot. And it's like, but I love it at the end of Peter's like, and you guys really just picked up the instruments? Because everyone else has discussed it by the circuit. They're like, oh, Christmas kind of sounds like it sucks. Like, this is, a, this is terrible. Um... So I love that whole bit. Also, like I said, I brought up Cosmo. I, we're just casually dropping the fact that, hey, Cosmo's here. Like I said, not less Cosmo already was part of the collector stuff. Like I said, I remember from What If that being a thing, but I didn't remember if it was from uh, Volume 1. It makes sense why they just casually have Cosmo now, because Cosmo wasn't in with them uh, in um, Love and Thunder. So it must have been a recent, recent development, which makes me wonder, was Nowhere a super recent purchase or something like that? I have no idea. That's just kind of interesting. I mean, does, I mean, we haven't really been space side since Endgame on that side of things. 
I mean, well, with Love and Thunder, but, like, we don't know the grander universe of, like, yeah, like, I guess, like, a lot of places are getting repaired and everything after the events of, you know, half the universe getting destroyed. Plus, like, Thanos wrecked a lot of places, uh, collecting the Infinity Stones, doing his thing, do, you know, so. What I also thought was kind of neat, I do like that, obviously, like, uh, the core of this is Mantis and Drax, because it was actually Drax's idea to get, uh, you know, it's like, right, get someone special for... Uh, Peter, that being uh, Kevin Bacon. But I love that uh, before then, we got, a, once again, another casual lore drop about Mantis being his sister. I was like, wait, what? I was like, wait, so does, what, it makes me wonder, was, like, was Mantis always his backup plan in case things didn't work out with Peter? Or was it always just cool? I mean, he had plenty of children as backup plans, but maybe he never saw, maybe because he saw Mantis had her power. So maybe he's like, right, that could be of use to me. But maybe it's not in the same manner as like every, all his other children like Peter. Like maybe she was always going to be like a, a special exception just be because of her abilities. But she hasn't told Peter that they're siblings. I was like, that's interesting. Which I like that, because, like, right, the Guardians are already a family, but for him having an actual family member out in space with him is going to be beautiful, which I'll, I'm also like, that seems like that's setting up for tragedy in Volume 3. I could be wrong, but obviously it's like, once again, the whole thing about Volume 3 is going to be, like, super, going to be sad. and makes me go, like, I feel like that could be set up to potentially kill off Mantis. I hope not, but, uh, you know, that just feels like that could be some emotional setup just to kind of, like, cut my heart out later on type of situation. But I also love that, like, Mantis has always been very, like, I guess meekish is kind of like how you, like, describe the character, but I feel like she's super aggro in this, and, and, and in a good way, because she's, like, very, like, because he keeps bringing up, like, the Zarg nuts, and she's like... Will you let go with the Zarg nuts? Like, she gets, like, very, like, yelly sometimes in this. And I was like, oh, I love that. Because, yeah, to my recollection, she's always been very, like, her characters have been very meekish. So I guess that just shows how much of an influence the Guardians have had on her, that she's kind of grown and changed like that. Because she's always been, like, very light-voiced and, you know, you know, and so her just getting, like, rough and yelly like that is really good, so... I love that they go to Earth, and obviously people are staring at the spaceship, and people are freaking out, and it's like, oh, you're wait, you ha you turned on the uh, cloaking, like, yeah, I did, and it's like, I just saw you turn it on, no, you didn't, yes, I did, no, you didn't, and it's like, understandably, people on Earth would be freaking out, because it's like, yeah, the Shatari during Avengers, then there was a the whole Thanos invasion, so I was like, that's the last time, like, a something of that ilk happened. It's like, well, there's also the whole celestial thing and uh, Eternals that happened. So it's kind of like, yeah, things just coming out of the sky, just like, oh, I'm freaking people out. So they're uh, going around and they're taking pictures. I love that she ran up to uh, a, a guy in a Captain America suit. So she's like, Steve! Like, and he, like, she hopped on him. It's like, wait, why is he running from me? He's like, I have no idea. And then there was like a, um, Oh, God, what was it? It was someone in, like, a Transformers outfit, but it's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry about my friend, but, like, a, what was it? Like, an, um, it wasn't an Autobot, but it was something. It's like, what those mini bots are called. It's like one of them murdered, uh, murdered his cousin or something like that. And they're just there, like, people are taking pictures with him and stuff like that. And then one of my favorite jokes is, oh, my God, we took a picture with the God of War. I was like, shut up. That's so good. There's no way they planned that. I mean, granted, yes, God of War has been a property that's been around for a long time. And maybe people have always compared Drax, you know, especially with the his knives being very, not the same, but maybe him having like the little dagger. So you can't help but think of like the Blades of Chaos, uh, but also like obviously like his, the red and like, you know, gray that it's his skin and stuff. So it's like, yeah, it's a comparison I've never thought to think about. But obviously, the timing of this is so interesting, too, because obviously uh, God of War Ragnarok dropped earlier this month. And it's also interesting because obviously in the MCU, there's Thor Ragnarok. So it's just like that, there's levels to that joke. I was like, there's there's no way they planned that out. But that had to be serendipity that that just happened out. Like, like that, that the timing's interesting. Once again, God of War would have already still been in the zeitgeist because like, you know, uh, the 2018 God of War came out. So it still would have been in there. And obviously Ragnarok was in the works and stuff like that. But like just the timing that this came out the same month that did, which interesting timing um makes you wonder someone here just a fan of 
the God of War games, or what, like, a, like it's James Gunn or just someone a part of this project, like, a big fan of that, or was it just, like, a, they've always gotten that comparison? Once again, I'm an idiot, I just, it never crossed my mind to compare Drax and, the, uh, I was about to say Thanos, uh, Drax and Kratos, but, uh, either way, I do love that they were kind of making some money on the side with that. They ended up hitting up a bar with, lo and behold, who's at the bar? It's Flula, which I'm like, hell yeah. It's like, of course. Uh, if you don't know Flula, he played, uh, I mean, well, obviously Flula's like a, a DJ, uh, but um, but also, like, obviously, you know, James Gunn-wise, he, he was j javelin in, um, oh God, uh, The Suicide Squad. So it's a, I thought that was just kind of a neat little thing. Um, but I do love them getting drunk and wasted and just kind of dancing and being able to have fun. I also love that there was a sign uh, for one of Kingo's movie. What was it? A Kingo's Christmas. I'm like, when did that happen? Because Kingo is one of the ones that was taken by the Celestial. So it's like that movie could have been already in production before he was taken. I mean, his... Um, his agent could be of like his agent or manager from internals could have just been like having that put out. It's like, right. We don't want, you know, it's like, well, the movie's already done. So let's put it out type of situation. Or it could be like an older movie that just happens to be playing around this time because of, you know, the holiday season. Either way, I love that they were, but once again, they had, it's like, Oh, we have no idea where Kevin Bacon is. And it's like, it's like here, it's a tour guide to it. And I love it. It's like, Oh, I don't know where my money is. It's like, you'll give this to us for free. You will give us all of your money, too. I was like, that's super jacked up using a power like that. But we saw they drop by uh, Queen Latifah's house. Um, uh, God. Uh, John Cena. Uh, I just, I loved it. Oh, there was another face. That I uh, I can't remember who. There was another face. Another face or two I recognize, but I can't remember now off the top of my head. And then he finally landed at Kevin Bacon's house. And then he was on the phone with Kira Citric. I was like... Wait, did we just get like a super casual voice cameo from her? It's like, okay, that, I mean, makes sense. But I was like, that's pretty neat. It's like, yeah, don't have to come all the way out the set, honey. Just, uh, this, uh, yeah, this little fun. I'd probably be like, oh, Kevin, could you get like Kara to say a few lines over the phone? She doesn't even have to show up the set and stuff like that. You know, I, I thought that was hilarious. It would have been funny if they had gotten a whole family together. That would have been weird. I don't I don't know how Sosie would have felt about that being in like, you know, being in something like this. Has she ever worked with either of her parents before? I don't know. I just thought that was kinda neat. I was like I was like, that sounds like Kira Cedric. That doesn't sound like that's like a sound alike. I was like, just for a few lines over the phone is pretty dope. Uh, but I, 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 cause I always expected there to be like a Mantis and Drax thing. So for them to kind of butt head so much, I mean, I guess that's kind of like the complicated love hate relationship that they have. It's like, she's like, all right, toss me over the fence. And he tosses, she's like, what are you doing? It's like, you told me, throw you over the fence. Don't throw you over the fence. Make up your mind. And then she, he steals the little elf guy. And she's like, what? You can't steal that. Well, it's out here. So like, well, maybe we should, cause she steals a candy cane. They break into Kevin Bacon's house and it's following him. And then it's like, I love Drax. It's like, wait, I left my thing. And she's like, well, at least I kept mine because I'm responsible enough. So she's like, do you love Peter and want to save Christmas? Or do you want that little elf guy? And he pauses. He's just like, uh, I want my little guy. And she's like, come on. I'm like, I love how she took charge. Because it is so not her her personality from what we seem to be so take charges. So for her to do that, it's so interesting. And then a run-ins with the cops. It's like, oh, that's kind of messed up and it's just like you're just casually knocking out cops and I love that he flips the car and she's like we're not here to kill people he's like well you should have told me that beforehand and it's like oh, okay you guys are okay she's like I'm sorry we're trying to help our friend that's why we're taking Kevin Bacon and it's like here you can have this now we're even and left her candy cane even though she wanted it it's like, does this look like a man to you? And the guy the cop was like no she's like thank you my friend is just being an idiot I, I love it. And so they um, use her powers. And I don't know what is this is a super meta joke of just being like they found out about Kevin Bacon. When she started mentioning his movies, obviously they referenced uh, Footloose and then they mentioned Friday the 13th. I was like, oh, are we going to go through the filmography? Because I said that I brought this. I mentioned this a little bit in my um trailer discussion i know i think um i think i think hector referenced it too hector from uh, heroes for forge had been like oh they could get really meta with it considering kevin bacon was in a marvel movie but part of me wonders did marvel specific did james gunn make that choice or did like marvel go like james you can't reference anything like x-men related because it's going to be too much of a hubbub about it for them like if they 
did mention it maybe at the time. So maybe that's why they avoided that movie in particular. It's like, it's an obvious thing to be like, oh, but like people would read too much into it, but it's still the thing of it's Kevin Bacon. So X-Men movies do exist in this continuity because of that. So it, it's still like, it's still kind of a catch 22. Even if I guess him being in it is enough to be like, you know, it makes X-Men movies uh, canon. Also, it's like, oh, do you know the fonts? It's like, oh, yeah, we like, you know, we had Diddy. Oh, he's such a nice guy, which I'm like, that's the general consensus. is like, yeah, Henry Winkler is, is Henry, Henry Winkler is such a nice dude. So it's just like, yeah, we had like, you know, we were going out for dinner one time. That doesn't make us, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily make us friends. But it's like, yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy and everything. So that's pretty dope. Uh, but then, like, the, the uh, really quickly, I'm like, because like, if they were going through the filmographies, I was like, are you going to reference, like, I don't know, you're going to reference Tremors? The reason why I love Tremors, Tremors is, like, one of my favorite classic movies, you know? Um, I've only seen, I want to say, I've, I've seen one and two. I think I've seen tiny bits and pieces. I, I think I've seen bits and pieces of three. No, I might have seen all of three. No, I've definitely, I, I don't know. I might, I think I've only seen bits and pieces. I don't think I've, I haven't seen four or five. Uh, but either way, uh, I, I was almost hoping they referenced Tremors just because of that. It's like, yeah, I feel befitting to bring up the movie where you fight these gigantic earth worm type creatures. So, but, uh, the thing I was about to bring up that was super meta, it's like how, like, how disgusted they were. They were like, wait, he's not a hero. Ugh, he's an actor. Ugh, I'm gonna be sick. We got we didn't get Peter a good gift. We got him a disgusting actor. I'm like, what is this shit talking about? I was like, this is so over the top. And they're just like, all right, you're gonna be the hero. And then he does a British accent. So, oh, I'm a soldier. And the, they're like, no, do your regular voice. And they're like, oh, you suck. And he's it's like, it's like, just be Kevin Bacon, but just don't suck. And he's like, oh, normally that would piss me off, but oh, this is so great. And they're just like, oh, you're the worst. You suck, Kevin Bacon. We hate you, Kevin Bacon. It's like, what is this? What is this? Out of nowhere. Just like, I guess like in the Marvel Universe, uh, Marvel hates, I guess like the Marvel Cinematic Universe hates actors and thinks they're garbage people or something like that. Um, there's almost like a meta level joke to that to some extent, because like Kevin Feige has like, a, I think a pretty good relationship with the actors in the MCU. Some people at Disney have not always, well, let's kind of, well, some people who might not currently be at Disney anymore, kind of apparently, reportedly, weren't always, like, didn't foster good relationships with actors, didn't kind of treat, the, have a good dynamic and relationship with the talent, necessarily, you know? So I almost feel like there's, I don't know if I'm reading too much into that. I mean, generally speaking, like, most people are just like, yeah, ass, uh, um, uh, uh, actors are entitled assholes or something like that. That I'm not saying everyone feels like that, but I feel like that is kind of like an underlining feel and vibe that some people kind of have about actors sometimes. You know, so it just it kind of feels like that. Like, oh, uh, actors are terrible people or something like. I was like, because that came out of nowhere and just how disgusted they were. But uh, they put on this, you know, whole thing for Peter. Everyone's a part of it. The lights are going on and everything. It's like, oh, this is wonderful. And so. They let, well, it's like, Peter's like, oh, less excited to see Kevin Bacon because he's like, wow, wait, you kidnapped Kevin Bacon? Yeah, it was Drax's that did. He's like, yeah, it was. It's like, this is human trafficking. Drax like, yeah, it is. It's like, this is not cool. And it's like the way Kevin Bacon was acting calm. It's like, you used your powers on him, didn't you? She's like, no, I can't remember. It's like, undo it. And it's just like, okay, it's okay. And he's looking around and he's freaking out, understandably. And he's like, yeah, I know, I know, freak out, dude. It's okay. And, you know, because Peter's used to this. He's had decades kind of to get used to this. And then Rocket's like, ah, calm down, dude. It's okay. We're not going to hurt you. He's like, is that a talking raccoon? I'll kill you. Don't you ever call me that. Which I'm like, why are you, you're still upset about that because you still don't know what a raccoon is, but you just, you know, like, oh, it's offensive. I know it is. I don't know what it is, but I, I know what it is. You know, I love it that even after all this time, you still hate that so much. Um. I also love that we don't explain Groot's situation. I'm like, once again, he is yoked out of his mind. At first, I was like, is that just because he's a, you know, maybe he's a, because uh, obviously, the last time we saw Groot, he was a teenager. Because he wasn't yoked like that in Love and Thunder. Because what I'm trying to remember, like, 
Yeah, because he was like, he was still teenage Groot in Love and Thunder, so this is after Love and Thunder, I think? Continuity-wise, I think? It's been obviously a couple months since I've seen Love and Thunder, so I want to say he's... He was Teen Groot, because he definitely wasn't buff, but I'm trying to remember if he was Teen Groot or whether he was already Adult Groot, because if he was already, you know, he, he had to be still Teen Groot, but I guess it's like, yo, like, he started hitting the gym, and, like, for whatever reason, we're just like, yeah, Groot is, like, super yoked now, so, and just like, hey, Kevin Bacon, don't run, you're not gonna run, are you? Just don't run, and he does, and just like, uh, freaking Nebula being like, you can't run, you can't outrun us, Bacon, I'm like, I love it. And so it's like, right, it, it, obviously Peter's apologetic and Craglin kind of references everything to uh, Kevin. It's like, hey, this is um, this holiday. We we're just trying to help him. Like the, the gang was just trying to help out my friend. You know, it's been kind of a rough time for him and stuff like that. And Kevin, and when he was talking to Kira Cedric on the phone, being like, hey, honey, I'll be I'll be home soon. I just uh, got to teach some people about who need to know about Christmas. And I was like, I almost halfway expected her to have a line of dialogue like, Kevin, what the hell are you talking about? I expected something like that, but no. Uh, but it also makes sense you would get a Kevin Bacon performance because I'm also like, I mean, like him singing because I'm like, yeah, he does music too with his brother, right? They're just the Bacon brothers, right? I could be mistaken. So I just, I love that, putting on a performance and everything. It's like, wow, this is actually pretty dope. Everyone handing out gifts. Even Cosmo giving Craglin something. It's like, that's not that, okay. Uh, Nebula gave Rocket uh Bucky's arm I'm like when the hell did you get what when I was like when the hell did you could you have gotten that it's Bucky walking around without his arm did he wake up and he's like what the hell is my arm or is it like an older version like I was like what what is that continuity speaking you know speaking wise I'm like I have no idea what that is uh like when would you have gotten that had the opportunity um and Peter got Groot a Game Boy. And I'm like, oh, you, right, because you are stuck in the 80s. Game systems have advanced since then, my guy. But it's like, no, you're still stuck in your 80s, you know. I'm sure, like, any, like, old school collector, it's like, oh, that actually is a pretty, I mean, from a collector standpoint, it's probably like, oh, that's actually pretty legit. That's pretty dope. And uh, Groot loved it, so. And I love that I want to say, um, I think it was Groot who gave everyone, like, these, like, almost, like, these clay, um, God, what would you call them? Uh, presentation type of little little things of little moments throughout the the um, throughout the uh, special. And I'm like, how the hell did you have these details? I mean, I guess they told you because there's one of uh, Mantis and Drax chasing after Kevin Bacon. There's the one of them watching Peter at the very beginning. There's the one of Drax flipping over the car. I'm like, how do you have access to these? Um, and then, like, the final one was Craglin. It's actual Craglin holding a clay model thing of Craglin holding a Craglin holding a Craglin. I was like, that's super meta in itself. I'm like, that's that's Inception levels of deep. Like, I love that. I was like, oh, that's, that's a pretty dope gift. Um, but, yeah. And uh, Kevin Bacon leaving me like, oh, I'll see you guys at Easter or something like that. I was like, hey, I hope, I wonder, are we going to have anything Easter related holiday special wise? And it's like, oh, and just that one last line from Nebula. Everyone's just like, goodbye, Kevin Bacon. Bye, Kevin. I was like, we're doing this. This is so weird. This is so great. And it's like, wow, I guess not all actors are pieces of shit. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What is this actor hate? I love it. That's so good. Uh, either way. I mean, I think there's almost like a meta level to it. Regardless how you feel about it, it's like, out of anyone in the cast, I know Chris Pratt gets like the most hate over the most recent years just because of stuff he said online and just other stuff that I'm like, uh, you know, everyone's entitled to have their personal feelings about Chris Pratt, but it was like, it almost felt like a meta level on that too, just because like, out of anyone in the cast, I feel like he's gotten the most shit over the past couple years. I mean, I'm sure at any actor's caught flack for anything over the past couple years, but him, especially in this property, him specific. Either way, putting all that aside, uh, at the very end, we had that, you know, moment between Peter and Mantis. I'm like, right, why'd you do all this? Why did you, you know, abduct Kevin Bacon? It's like, well, we heard about how, you know, Yondu kind of ruined Christmas for you. It's like, oh, Craglin doesn't know the end of that story. Apparently, Yondu, always having some sentimentality, ended up uh, giving him... Uh, he ended up picking it up out of trash. It's a little thing he uh, keeps on the dashboard, right? Um, 
and uh, he ended up keeping it. And obviously, it's like, yeah, they had their bumpy roads, but he did think of uh, Peter as his son, and I thought that was that was beautiful. And turns out, uh, the the pistols, the the laser pistols that uh, Peter uses were a Christmas gift from Yondu. So you're like, oh man. And it's just obviously it's just a reminder that he's not around anymore. Because obviously even Kraglin was kind of like, yeah. Even it's like, yeah, he still has the Yondu thing. He's like, yeah, it's for controlling, uh, you know, uh, this uh, space needle thing. But like, I, you know, still even at this point in the continuity, he still hasn't quite mastered it yet. Which means it has to be a Volume Three thing where he he does his own Yondu thing. It has to be. But um. But obviously, there's also the whole thing of Mantis being like, right, your father is my father. He's like, wait, we're, you're my sister? He's like, this is the greatest Christmas gift, you know? And it's like, I love that, them hugging at the end, too. I'm like, I do love that being a beautiful... And once again, it's like, yes, the Guardians were already his makeshift family. Now you're telling me, it's like, wait, you're actually my sister, too? So we're actually family? That's actually pretty dope, you know? So... And I do love the stinger at the end where it's like, oh, you know, oh, Groot ruined Christmas. I guess we're just going to have another special or something like that, which is sad because it's like Marvel Studios might have another special. But this version of the Guardians, no, because, you know, it's sad because like obviously, um, uh, God, uh, volume three it's supposed to be the end of this iteration. Like, whatever the Guardians might look like in the future of the MCU, it won't be this version, and obviously James Gunn won't be a part of it, you know? So, that there's actually a sadness to that line of, like, oh, that's sweet, but it's also, like, that's not 100% the case. But, I mean, you know, it could be just for the greater context of, oh, guess we'll just have to have another holiday special or something like that, considering, like, yeah. I do hope they continue to make more and more of these. Like, little hour special things. I hope they do. They don't always have to be centered around holidays. It'd be pretty dope. I mean, there's plenty of holidays you can do something for, like, Valentine's Day. It'd be neat if they actually did something with Deadpool, considering, like, I want to say the first Deadpool came out around Valentine's Day because it was, like, being marketed like a romance comedy type of thing, which it legitimately legitimately was so i thought that was just pretty dope you know so it'd be interesting if they kind of did something like that hell kevin bacon even referenced easter so you can do something with that uh, i think uh i know some theories were wondering whether or not santa claus would actually be in this because santa claus is an actual character in the marvel comics or something like that i mean just like any you know greek and norse gods or a thing you know so i guess you know it shouldn't be too much of a surprise I'm like hey santa claus is an all-powerful being in this universe so but they didn't do anything with it. Doesn't mean they still can't in the future. But yeah. Uh, either way. Uh, I, did, I just thought this was lovely. Like I said. I'm, I'm so happy we're able to get two of these this year. Obviously getting Werewolf by Night. Which was great. And now this. Is, this was just so much fun. And I hope we're able. Like I said. I do hope uh, Marvel Studios. The MCU continues doing like one off. Like, I do hope this becomes, like, a new thing that they're like, oh, like, we have an idea that isn't a full movie and it's not, like, a full serialized thing. It's just kind of a one-off, like, hour-long thing or something like that. So, I, th I, I do hope we get a lot more of these going forward. So, that's pretty dope, so... Definitely puts you in, obviously, like, the holiday spirits and stuff like that, and it just kind of, you know, it's just like, ah, uh, family and being together, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's, just, it's wonderful. It's just, it was really nice. And once again, Kevin Bacon gets to go back home being like, wow, I was part of this space adventure. It's like, wow, that's, that's crazy, honey. It's like, once again, we, we live and exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I and mean, we live in a Marvel Universe where crazy stuff has happened on Earth, like, literally all the time, so, uh... Why don't we, either way, that's, uh, that's really all I wanted to talk about. Uh, I guess I should end this also being like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I know people who went to, I think only Comic-Con is where we got, uh, they got volume three footage, so people have described what went down in it, and obviously it being kind of like some sad moments and stuff like that, but, um, obviously it's, I was already excited for volume three, but kind of what we're set up in this and leading into volume three, I'm, I'm very excited to, you know, see what happens in the final chapter of this iteration of the, uh, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know if this technically counts as Phase 4 because Wakanda Forever is supposed to be the end of Phase 4. So this might be kind of like a 4.5 is what this is. It's just kind of that, maybe like, I don't know if the, um, the specials kind of count on that same level. So it might be a thing of, this might be just kind of an in-between thing. It might not count officially as Phase 4. So it might just be kind of like this, like middle ground point between Phase 4 and 5. But yeah, this is the last uh, MCU thing we're getting this year, so... And we get, was it uh, Quantumanium in February, right? So, 
but um, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, where, uh, or the MCU as a whole, but also, you know, like I said, the next time we see the Guardians in this iteration of the Guardians in their final chapter in Volume 3, when it eventually comes out. So I'm, I'm very, very excited uh, to see where everything goes, taking us, well, going forward. Uh, but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good bye.